Welcome everybody. I hope you had a good start into the new year. Um, today we are presenting our tender. It's fine. It's been published just before Christmas, uh, a bit later than we announced. Um, the reasons I will mention in the meantime at some point. Um, in general, the tender is very well acknowledged by the European Commission. They see the potential in it. They see the, uh, the the chance for cities in Europe, in particular, but obviously everywhere, uh, into transitioning to a circular economy. Okay, the technical remarks I just mentioned already. If you wish to uh, translate the slides and so on, it is possible. Um, even though teams just recognize me as speaking French, weird. Um, Audio translation is obviously uh, emerging, so it's not great, but maybe it helps. Then on how we perform this event. So for now, only I speak. We have agreed in the consortium that I represent present it because I'm the PSP, PCP person. That's the main reason. Yeah, I'm, um, we and Pirik are the ones who are the PCP. Uh, um, partners, hence I present it because of the PCP tender. Later in the event, we will unmute everybody and then you can ask questions aside of um, asking them in the Q&A function. Um, I'm skipping the networking. Please use the Q&A function uh, if you want to ask questions. It makes it a little bit easier for us to organize and order questions because in chat they appear one after another. And we wish to keep the net uh, the chat free for a little bit of networking should you wish to do it. So I presume you are here because you're interested in the tender, possibly bidding, uh, possibly you are able to do it by yourself, possibly you need partners. If you need partners, you might be searching for them or you might be hoping that someone uh, approaches you. In the latter case, there's no, you, it is necessary that you basically say, here I am. Uh, I would, uh, uh, I'm offering this, maybe contact me via these details. In addition, there's obviously the matchmaking platform and the function does not end after you enter it yourself. You obviously should also use the matchmaking platform to find the partners for your consortium. And ultimately it is so that uh, someone will have to make the first step and it is a very professional setting. We are here, we are building a consortium. So um, we just contact someone and all you might hear is, yeah, interesting, let's join. Uh, sorry, we are already in a consortium and it's full or no interest. Yeah, It is not a, a marriage proposal or anything like that. Uh, don't be shy. I know SMEs are typically reserved in doing this, but for a tender, it's simply necessary to build uh, partnerships and it begins with the first mail, with the first call. It's normal. So the questions are already set. Please use the Q&A function. We will um, answer what we can. If something new appears, it will also be made public on the FAQ and via social media and so on. Everything will be shared afterwards, with the exception of the Q&A section, because there's a little point recording it. It's not structured, so uh, it's not helpful for anyone to watch it. We will leave that and it gives you a little bit more freedom and maybe you will be less shy to ask your questions. And obviously everything will be shared afterwards also. Um, yeah, in particular with you, because you will be informed directly, but also via our uh, public channels. Um, okay. One more disclaimer in the beginning. So um, this is the first of multiple events. You know, I say this because I'm confronted with the challenge of probably having an audience which knows us for, let's say, seven, eight months through the OMCs and someone who has just uh, heard from us for the first time. Some of you might already read the challenge brief, some of you might have not. So it's a very diverse group and uh, I don't want to read out the tender for you because this would be ultra boring. So the attempt is to give you a high level overview uh, over the challenge, the instrument and the bit. 
uh, to basically explain where we're coming from, what's important for us, uh, what is things you need to look out for and so on. But this implies at the same time that we will not go deep into everything. Hence, we, there are two more events uh, on the next slide. Uh, or more, more than two actually um, uh, on the next slide. And it shouldn't stop you from asking your question, but my answer might be sometimes look into section 2.1 in TD1 and join us next week. Yeah. Uh, this will be a gut decision, more or less. If I think this is a question everybody will have because I was unclear or we were unclear, uh, then we I would answer it immediately. But depending on the volume and so on, I might just refer you, which does not mean that your question is not relevant. It is just that the setting next week or in two weeks time is better. Yeah, Then we will have more time to discuss it and give you nuance we can't give you here today. We want to provide you with some insights into what the documents are, what is the challenge, what is the PCP instrument. Uh, obviously, we want to nudge you to read further, build your consortium, and ultimately bid in the tender. Our challenge is uh, brief is uh, pretty good, I would say, but uh, obviously the challenge is empty without you, the suppliers, good supplier consortia, answering it and we developing it together to come to uh, what we need. Yeah, and to the degree it is possible, we want to help you build consortium. We, uh, consortia, I know, I acknowledge that it is difficult. Hence the reminder, don't be shy just to say here I am and don't be shy to chat to the person, contact that person, uh, whatever not, take note of it. Um, from there on, I can't help but we can facilitate. As promised, what are the future events? So two are already public and announced. Uh, next week, there will be a technical application training. Uh, please in quotes, we will basically describe in detail uh, what the challenge is and how you apply, how you write the technical tender. And the week after, uh, everything on the administrative and financial part. Yeah. Um, both will be recorded. Both will be made public. Uh, if you can't attend, I know it's a weird time window for some. Um, but obviously invited. Um, my recommendation is send the technical person to the technical event and sit there, uh, send the formal admin person to the admin event and not vice versa, clearly. But uh, um, again, everybody can uh, see, the, watch the recording. And then we will organize, timing is not yet entirely uh, clear, open sessions for questions. Yeah, I mean, you can obviously ask your questions at any point in time, but then there will be when you already probably have written a second good part of the uh, proposal, we will do another question sec uh, round so you can ask, hey, what is this? What is that? No, it will be open. Uh, people can join, can ask questions. Um, again, if something new comes, we would publish it for everybody, but we assume that most of it will be clarification questions, uh, assurance questions and so on. And at the bottom, the indicative start of phase one and when the phases are running, so when the project is basically operational. Uh, May is not to the beginning of May. This is not possible. I think you can do the math in your head. We have set in the tender mid of May. It might be the beginning of June. We will see. Yeah, We will see uh, um, how the evaluation goes, how many tender we've received and we need to evaluate and so on and so on. Um, but from there on, the project is running. OK, lots of disclaimers. Let's begin. Um, the challenge. Not on the high level, not much has changed since the uh, since the uh, open market consultations, but in detail, a lot has changed. You know, we understood the ch over time, we understood the change better and better and how to structure it, how to make sense of it. Um, but in principle, it is continues to be the challenge of eight cities. 
who have one common need. It is the need to transition towards the circular economy. These cities or the city networks in the case of Slovenia and Sweden are already quite advanced or quite ambitious with regard to circularity. And they have recognized that this is a difficult task. It's a major challenge and complex challenge to transition. It is like digitization before. It is like energy transition or uh, defoliation, whatever you want to call it. I believe it's even more complex than that. So um, me, they need help in setting up their organization and their city planning and their city operation to uh, act circular. And this has resound with many. Yeah, our follower network at this stage of the project is already substantial and it will continue to grow because we uh, it's not only that we hit the challenge note right we um, basically what the problem is but also in our approach we hit a note and uh, it simply um, interests many many people okay the budget you know 5.64 million in r d you know, direct r d a direct tender which we spent in a competitive phase um in, in three competitive phases okay I must once more uh, explicitly state how amazing the work has been with the Procurus and also our other partners, and especially RICE, EIP and Targis, uh, and as well as not partners, they're all partners, but we had also exchanged with others who helped us uh, understand certain detail. Um, but with the Procurus, who are very uh, ambitious, who are very uh, brave to go into a PCP and uh, do it. It's not the simplest, most simple of instruments uh, to procure stuff, but for a very complex challenge, you need sometimes complex uh, instruments and complex solutions, such as the one we are going to procure. And you already see how many followers we've uh, re 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 collected. So far, we have been focusing on the city collectives and this multiplier, as we call it, uh, uh, organizations. These includes, yeah, the city networks, but also already ministries responsible for municipalities. Yeah, so national, federal ministries in some countries responsible for the cities in their respective country see this as a way to uh, basically solve their circularity problem and uh, other horizontal organizations including for a circular business and so on and so on um, over time we expect that the above row will also grow that the individual cities uh, uh, will also be um, yeah interested and probably maybe test your solution in the final phase as well through some means uh, All of this to be say that it's not only us. I believe the market for your solution would be great. Yeah, if you succeed, if the if it works fine, if it does what we expect it to do. I mean, not only in the sense of that you deliver your work, but that what the idea behind it is actually uh, 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 convincing people, the staff in the cities. Then I believe you have a great market ahead and uh, uh, we are happy to have launched it. Uh, but the pro and we are happy then to benefit from your solution. But ultimately, uh, we want a solution to be commercialized and um, whichever success the suppliers will have, we're happy that you're having it. OK, in a summary, as I said, high level, um, the summary of the problems and the needs for the transition to CE. So basically, in the technical uh, to the technical respect, there are four domains in which there is a problem or a need. So first of all is understanding the CE circular economy knowledge. We all know it is divided in value chains. Within each value chain, there are hundreds of solutions, and some have been tested here, some have been tested there. There is from this follows that there is a language barrier and uh, it is highly distributed. There are some pages trying to collect it, but they are um, partially overlapping, uh, partially exclusive, exclusive from one another. All of this is not practical for a city. Yeah. For a normal person to say, 
I want to do in my department something circular, it is not realistic to go out and check 15 web pages on what might be uh, a good way to do it. Nobody will do this research. Hence uh, our idea that, okay, first I present the problems. Um, then there is the fact that even if you know what you want to do, how do I do it? Yeah, many people have no practice. They have been linear for the past and now they are supposed to be circular. How do they switch? What is the first step? You need some, they need some support into basically uh, feeling confident that they can do it right and not get, um, yeah, uh, beef, sorry for the lack of a better word, of, from the hierarchy if they've done something wrong later. Um, then already implicitly said before, these eight cities willing to go out or organizations willing to go out and advance circularity, although they are advanced, they don't have the capacity to manage it within their own organizations. Yeah, it's too many people need to be approached, too complex. Now imagine cities which are smaller or which haven't, uh, have, don't have the 10, 15 years experience. Cities, any average city is somewhere in the middle of any given country. They start from scratch. They don't have the money to uh, afford a circular economy expert who basically drives the strategy. They need help. And then ultimately, this replies to any given person or any given business in the local economy. Well, everybody has a linear mindset. Yeah? They maybe understand uh, bits and pieces of circularity, but not the entirety of it. So this needs to be changed. We cluster, we, we, we branded this, yeah, simply to simplify our communication with you, to simply give you structure when you work on it, and to, for us, when you read your proposals into these uh, four uh, areas, which also constitute uh, the key technical uh, evaluation criteria. Yeah, information, operation, organization, change, and upskilling. They are indeed reflective of what uh, the underlying need is. So the titles are not bad, um, but obviously our needs are specific within these given areas. You might also, yeah. Now, what is the um, the response? Yeah, I described the problem. Now I res basically res describe the need. What do we want to get from you? Yeah. So we want from you to uh, get better access and understanding of the circular economy knowledge which already exists yeah, and is emerging in the future. Make it accessible for us. Make it easy to read for us. Make it uh, translated into the local language. On a day-to-day -day basis, I am a normal municipal worker. I maybe don't have a, a university degree. Um, what do I do? Yeah, on a day-to-day -day level. If I have to do something circular, what is my first step? So basically present us with uh, uh, modules which become workflows through which um, for any given problem use case you can uh, follow to get to the result. It doesn't mean that the workflow presents the gives the result, but it instructs the municipal staff worker to achieve the result. Excuse me. Now, accessing the internet, uh, having a checklist in front of me is not enough. It's a complex problem, so I obviously need uh, to exchange with my network within the city, with the local business, maybe with other cities, some guy somewhere who has done something I am interested in, and hence we need one location for all of this. Yeah? To find information, to find the people, and to keep track of what I have been doing. This we do not want as a complex software, but I don't, I don't try to control myself not to go too deep, but into basically it's not, it's not a single purpose, but it's a very focused uh, web platform tool. Yeah, it's about circular economy. Cities have many, many legacy systems. 
trying to change them or trying to hook them up is very difficult. Uh, we obviously want you to get as far as you can with interoperability and so on, but we acknowledge that uh, uh, you will not rip out what there is and replace it yeah, with, with something new. This will not happen. So we basically want, if like for Google for searching the internet, we want your CE solution, whichever name you give it, for any city, uh, for your city staff to recognize, I go on the CE solution to do research circular uh, use cases, case studies, uh, progress, my, uh, contact any people, and so on and so on. Okay. Now, regarding the linear mindset, uh, this you can have as an individual, but as well as a city as a whole. Yeah, basically the operational model of the city uh, needs to change as well. So we need a change plan to transition the city slowly into uh, circularity. This includes both uh, changing the, the mind of people regarding uh, how to procure, let's say, um, and how to act, but also obviously the platform, the solution itself is a change. You, know, you are asking people to do stuff differently. Uh, so as good as the solution will be in the end, if you haven't uh, succeeded in uh, getting the people on board using your platform, the solution, um, yeah, you will have failed ultimately uh, because even though all the potential is there, nobody is using it, hence no results, no impact. So. We require um, a change plan and with this capacity building training to get the people um, on board. All of this as seamless as possible. You know, we don't want, uh, it should be embedded in the platform. It should be embedded in the workflow. It should be embedded in the uh, any given search on the AI. You know, if someone has, I'm just giving an example. Um, if someone has searched something uh, which is way beyond their experience, and the platform should be able to recognize how much a person knows, uh, um, then maybe you suggest a video to watch, let's say. Good. As you see, the pine points, you, you see how I struggled more and more with the fourth and the third point to kind of stay focused because it is all connected. Yeah. Um, the main enabler is obviously this information solution uh, and uh, your approach concept overall presented, made available through the platform and empowered through your yeah, change plan. I basically said this. Um, uh, yeah, we want one holistic solution which uh, kind of tackles circularity and um, makes people do more circular stuff. Now, I, for simplicity, for sake of simplicity, I've mostly spoken about city, uh, but once you've done it for the city, for the local business, it almost follows. Yeah, that's it's been our conclusion in uh, writing and working on the change brief that once you have a search engine for case studies which works for cities, you also have one for business. Once you have uh, um, identified relevant training, it is also there for business. Business has some specific needs, but they will utilize whichever you have uh, built before. This point will become more clear uh, once you've read the change brief and maybe later in the presentation at the latest next week. Okay. Good, good. I mean, I've been a bit ahead of myself because the next slide, which was new, uh, hence it's ugly, uh, uh, just follows. Okay, so city will be the focus of your development, um, uh, but business also uh, will be a user of your platform. Um, in the city, there will be intermediaries. These are the people such as the procurers here. They are experts in uh, circular economy and they are able to network within the city and get uh, circular economy, advanced circular economy. Yeah. With them, one would develop the plan of what to do over the next coming few, five years, let's say. And then there will be municipal staff of any given level. Some know, some know nothing. All of them need to become circular. 
Same applies to in the local business uh, regards. Yeah, there will be companies which are already circular. They need to be promoted. They need to be made accessible and available for cities to utilize them. Yeah, so that they. If there is a business which is circular and now I have the choice, how do I tender? And I know there is a circular company, then I tender in such a way that is circular because it is aligns with my uh, objectives. Um, so. This is one, this informational exchange, but also we want to drive them to become more, enable them to become more circular and give them incentives to become more circular, which is then this, um, uh, the question of city and business cooperating a little bit more on what should happen in the next few years. Yeah? If big tenders are coming, how do we change our requirements that they are circular? What can be provided? How can it be provided and so on? All of this becomes softer and softer. Yeah, all of this becomes less and less IT, but it can only work if it is frictionless and hence the platform is required. Um, decision makers are listed here. You've never seen it before if you follow us, um, but implicitly they are also using a platform to a degree. Yeah, at least during the implementation phase where you set up the platform and uh, create uh, the circular mission for the coming years, obviously they will be they will see what you do, you know, what you're offering. In summary, with regards now you heard a lot of what we want, and now might you might think we have something very specific in mind. Yeah, regarding what we want to have solved, this is true. And may even to the way we want to see it being developed, you know, which stages, milestones to take. Uh, and but we don't know what the solution actually is. You know, we we don't know from the technology perspective what is the best, let's say, AI to use, or like uh, we don't know how to structure it uh, exactly. Uh, and. Um, Yeah, and especially specifically, we don't know how to implement it. We need help. We need you. Hence, there is the money, and hence we hope uh, that you will have good ideas and bid. One clarification, which sort of appeared during the review uh, with the European Commission, um, AI has advanced. AI has adv advanced a lot. So hence. The tradition of old AI projects a few years back, where basically the customer has the data sets, gives an AI company the data sets to train it on something, and then the AI is capable of doing it. Uh, we don't follow this model because we say we do not know how to train the AI. It is part of the challenge. Yeah, we will. Um, the next slides will explain it. Help you into finding relevant sources where you can find you can use for training, uh, but uh, uh, the expectation cannot be that we know how to train uh, any given AI. If so, then this challenge would be entirely different. Um, I just say this as a disclaimer, just because this thinking is, the, is there. Um, we, we, I was a bit blind about it during the open market consultation and uh, in all prior communication of, uh, from us. OK, the circular economy taxonomy is not directly. Uh, part of your of the challenge. But it's it is part and is an enabler. Yeah, and this is a public effort. It's a shared effort. It's the key message. Um, we came to the conclusion that if we send five suppliers and during the tender phase, maybe even more out and say, now look out for the data which you could use to train your AI, good portion of the results will be the same. It's a waste of time yeah, for you, for us. Um, hence, we have initiated even before the launch of the tender, this CA taxonomy working group. There was uh, uh, there's a recorded event in September where we will write um, where we introduce the first version of the white paper, which will be iterated. Yeah, we have done the first version, and uh, over the coming months, years, we will iterate it and uh, expand it. It has basically three different purposes. 
first to define uh, core terminology on certain terms which are not yet defined through standards. This is a must. All suppliers must use this. Why? If all of you would came up with different definitions of certain things, then the AI would find different things, and then we, uh, the Procurers, would be unable to compare the solutions. This is first. Yeah. And secondly, the, the, there's a question, would you document it well enough? Yeah, because typically, uh, um, yeah, it is done once to solve the problem, but then nobody takes care of it anymore. This is what normally happens. I'm not saying that you, it always happens with you, but this is what often happens. Hence, we pulled this out and we say we take care of it because it is in our interest. So we take care of the terminology. You can suggest terminology and so on, but this is something, excuse me, it is winter, I know it doesn't stop. Um, this is something we would take care of and um, you can contribute yeah, and you can criticize us as well, anything. It will be public, not only public because all suppliers, it will be public in general. Anyone can come, anybody can uh, contribute, anyone can use uh, what we will develop. Then we have, it's evolving and there is a set of data sources, for instance, I don't know, 10, 15 locations where you can find case studies on circular economy. Um, you might, you might not use this for to train your AI. You might know better ways of doing it. You just need to explain it to us. But uh, you basically, if we find a gap in your uh, later over time, step by step, find a gap in your results and say, look, in the taxonomy there is a source for it. You please use it. Then you would be inclined to use it. Yeah. But we understand that this is an iterative process. We don't understand that there's one single answer. It will evolve. Um, so this is a stepping stone for you. Um, please use it uh, to the degree you can, you, to the degree you find it useful. Please contribute to it. Uh, if you find the public source, we will make it public. But if you have an IP protected source, it will obviously remain IP protected. This is then background, background to the project. If you, for whatever reason, you are a consulting company or whatever, have created a list of hundreds of uh, case studies uh, on circularity and super well classified, categorized, whatever, describe it in your tender, but it remains secret. Yeah. That we will not share it. We will not make it part of the taxonomy. We will not even mention it. You just need to identify it as background. And then finally, um, the core principle is interoperability uh, for the project. So, and we state a few key things which should be considered in that, which we consider as the state of interoperability. Yeah? And we are uh, probably. Uh, I don't know. I do not know whether we're thinking deeper than you, but we are definitely thinking uh, from a public perspective. Let's put it this way. Yeah, you might have a very, you might have a business focus. So hence there might be a difference. Hence the need for us to uh, make it explicit and describe it a bit. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Sorry, I was uh, thinking whether to add something or not. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks. We need to add it. Uh, this is probably uh, still uh, still missing. Yeah, good point. Thank you, uh, people. I probably said wrong. There's another question. Just to clarify, the deliverable of this process must be an AI digital solution. Is this correct? Yes. The deliverables are multifold, but the result ultimately is an AI enabled platform, um, which digital platform, which uh, able of scaling. It's uh, another important aspect which comes short in this presentation, I just realized. Um, I come to results a bit later, yeah? But now the background. Okay, no, I should come to this. Let's, let's do it now. Okay. The four domains you see here, are domains which needs to be resolved in a digital solution. 
Yeah, it is a digital solution uh, in whichever form you shape it, in whichever technologies you combine, uh, which is web accessible, uh, highly scalable, not only for the number of users within a given city, but also in the future, we think about the future, and right now we are eight cities, but you already saw how many followers we, are, we have. We hope that your solution is so good that it convinces hundreds or thousands of cities to basically use it to um, uh, uh, get wise on uh, circularity yeah? and become transition to circularity through uh, many, many small stone steps. So all of this clearly is digital, but it is not machine alone. For an AI to be smart, I think after one year we all know someone needs to take care of it someone needs to have oversight human oversight the big word um over it to control it to to fine-tune it to make it uh, usable to point out to, to correct flaws uh whichever mistakes there is yeah and to also support people obviously yeah because just because it's there doesn't mean that people know how to use it let's say how to write a good prompt or whatever so um we want a digital solution but it needs circular economy expertise to make it useful and ultimately if you're going to operate it uh with multiple clients such as the cities to be you need someone who supports them and i go beyond that yeah i mean this is not stated here on the slide but it is slated in the challenge brief you might as well use all of this as a platform to sell other services. Consultancy on CE strategy, yeah, which is then something to be translated, put in into your platform. But the focus of this 5.64 million uh, tender is to develop CE solutions, which are basically, um, yeah, this digital uh, This digital result, this digital outcome, this digital yeah solution. Sorry, a bit circular my argument. Um, okay, this was a summary on the challenge brief. Next week, we will do also we will depending on time and questions, we will also look into the challenge brief a little bit, and I will describe the sections a bit. Um, uh, but next week at the latest, we can go into detail. This is the challenge. Now, how do we get there? Uh, how how do we get the funding and so on? The PCP process is a staged process. It's a competitive process. So we have uh, finished our tender. The tender is public. It is accessible to you. The result is known. Uh, there are no more ifs or mights or whatever. Uh, we know what our query is. You know what our query is. Now we need to tender. And then obviously we hope you win and um, the beginning the project begins. And then the first phase for uh, four months for solution design, we will award five suppliers uh, with uh, almost a million um, to advance the concepts they have evolved, developed in the tender. This will go further than just concept design. It will obviously be first implementation of the digital solution. Um, please remind me if I don't do it later to open table one in TD1. This is there you describe there, there you can see described what the steps we consider to be uh, during the uh, development. It might it's not set in stone, yeah, but we expect this to be the typical steps. After phase one, or during phase one, uh, you will make us an offer, the five winner, the five uh, involved, not anyone else, will make us an offer for phase two, and then we will pick three, and then there is a significant amount of money, over 700,000 per supplier to basically prototype it. Yeah? Develop the whole solution, almost ready for deployment. It will be tested with cities, it will be tested uh, um, with users, and we come into phase three, where we roll it out. Two suppliers, so it must be competitive up until the end. Uh, two suppliers, 
run their solutions in uh, we don't know exactly yet how many and which cities we will see how this evolves but it should be fully scalable so there should be not a limitation you should expect to have at least those which are listed in the tenant specs um, and hopefully some followers yeah because it should be of interest for you to basically um, get the first touch on the future customers and um, uh, uh, get yeah, familiar with them. This here should we expect not to be relevant. Yeah, I mean, it is here because theoretically it could follow after PCP that the PPI comes and uh, um, uh, additional funding is provided because the solution is yet too expensive. But my personal expectation is that it will be hard to argue. Yeah, oh, I have, uh, I re realized I have this pen and not the laser point. Um, it will be hard to argue probably because it must be scalable by design, hence, and the development has happened. So where should the cost come from? It's not like manufacturing. Nevertheless, the possibility exists. Yeah, if it is convincing, look, we need more development, then there might be follow up on this and you don't get stranded. If it is market ready, then obviously, all the followers, all the procurers are ready to, uh, especially the procurers, because they have invested a lot of effort now. They want the solution directly afterwards as well. Funding principles. Money is obviously important. So it's a tender, it's not a grant. Yeah? Though we are a Horizon project, you will receive a tender. There is a ceiling for each phase. You can bid up to the ceiling. Yeah. Granting us some reduction on uh, the IP you will retain. Yeah, so your costs are probably a bit higher, but because you retain uh, IP, uh, you can retain the IP through this tender because it's a PCP. Uh, we expect that you give us a discount, let's say. Um, so your, your costs are probably higher than what is tendered, but because you get more out of it than just our money, you will also get IP you are allowed to keep. To finish this argument, this is not usual. Yeah, this instrument is not is unusual in that sense because normally, if it is something is being tended, the IP falls over. Yeah, whoever attended receives the IT in full. In this case, it is not that simple. Yeah, no, it, it should not happen. Let's put it this way: the IP should remain with you, and you commercialize it. That's the objective. On the ceiling, uh, to highlight, there uh, is no VAT. No, Istanbul, the lead procurer has secured a VAT exemption, so the amounts you see are in full. This is what you can receive. The offer has to include all costs, anything you might apply for you. Yeah, don't know what it is. It's your uh, for you to solve. And the payment is based on the offer price, and uh, you will receive, uh, you will write invoices to us after we approve your work. Um, yeah. Now on the contour, the, the terms, the court limiting terms. What you see in red is a change to what you've seen in the past if you have been present in the OMCs. And it's one of the reasons why uh, the tender was published a bit later. Because just as we were ready, the European Commission has released a new guidance on PCPs. One of it, and to be, to be understood in context of the AI Act, is that only with very, very good reasons can tenders be uh, open, entirely open. In all other cases, tenders are expected to be restricted to EU member states and Horizon Europe, Europe associated countries. At the same time, the UK uh, signed and both parties signed uh, the accession form to the Horizon Europe program. So only a small number of companies was outside. And to anyone who is and is present, I am very sorry that you have followed us and you are not able to bid anymore but there is no there's no nothing we can do about it yeah the important thing is that uh, the term established in eu member states i this is new to me and uh, 
I will never claim to uh, understand this because I'm not a business consulting consultant. But if you look at the European uh, EC guidance on PCPs, there's a further further differentiation uh, that uh, of control. We do not require control within the EU or associated member states because we are not a security sensitive uh, tender. Yeah. If you would be a defense uh, company, then also control must be um, secured in the EU. But this established, I don't know whether it gives passage or not. In any case, 50% of the work, as you saw before, must take place in EU or Horizon Europe associated countries. So this means a company which uh, uh, established uh, in Bonn, Germany, just next door, cannot subcontract 80% of the work to, I don't know, East Asia. Yeah, uh, It must happen here. The R&D staff must be here in Europe or associated countries, which obviously are not only Europe. So I need to correct myself. Any kind of operators can uh, bid. SMEs typically are very good in bidding for um, this unusual cause. The size typically doesn't matter, but take into consideration, you will have to take out insurance for a very large framework contract. Yeah, it's almost 3 million you will be able to receive. So uh, obviously uh, some size is uh, necessary or at least for the lead procurer. It doesn't mean whatever size the partners and subcontractors are, it doesn't matter, but the lead procurer must be able to uh, carry the burden. Um, any kind of uh, tender, is, any kind of consortium is allowed, whether it is uh, single joint uh, partnerships or con subcontracting, all fine. You just need to describe it and obviously, um, yeah, that's it. Then there is uh, uh, something unusual, which is called an offer award criteria, um, which are considered uh, yeah, award criteria, but I'm not being 100% correct here, but I suggest to you, no, I'm, I suggest to you to consider them as an extension of selection criteria. Yeah, it is, you need to be able to uh, fulfill an offer award criteria, otherwise you can't do your job alone. Yeah, through a partnership, you might be able to jump uh, uh, jump this bar. For instance, there is an off award criteria on R and D. Well, it's an R and D tender, yeah. So you must be able to do R and D. There is an on off award criteria on commercialization. Well, it is a tender with the aim of a commercial solution. So someone on your consortium must be able to commercialize it. Yeah? Whether you are the developer. Who commercializes it or you seek partnership with an entity which is capable of uh, scaling up solutions whatever it doesn't matter to us but someone in the consortium must be able and be a show proof record of the fact that uh, you can at least theoretically scale up or have the willingness to scale up there are no pre requirements yeah, whoever has render, uh, read the tender today, uh, uh, the first time, it's fine. Anything OMCs and so on before maybe have helped you. I hope they did. Uh, uh, but um, the only thing that counts is the 1st of April, the submission deadline, and that everything is included. Now, general requirements. Electronic submission is via email. Uh, it might sound a bit um, old school, but it is good for you because these tendering platforms, if you have to submit 20 documents uh, and everybody's submitting at the same time, they tend to be slow and then it's a nerve wracking experience. We prevent you from that. We give you a zip archive. You put everything in the right place. You send it to us, you're good. Yeah, but obviously do it in time, which is the 1st of April, Istanbul time. Please take note of the time. We have to make a cutoff point and anything beyond the cutoff point, we have to exclude. It is a public tender. There's not, nothing to discuss. Everything is in English. Um, and the IP sharing I mentioned, it is that. And IP sharing, I recommend if this is something, uh, something which bothers you or worries you, the framework agreement through the updated guidance from the EC, the framework agreement got much better than it was in the past. 
And in the framing agreement, the Article 5, I think it is, in very detail describes uh, what this means. Yeah. It means basically that you retain IP on any foreground generated. Foreground means basically the results of this project, provided you commercialize the solution or you attempt to. If nobody wants to buy it in the end and you fail, obviously it's not your fault. But uh, um, you should attempt to commercialize it. If you don't do it, then the IP is shared in the sense that the procurers can request from you to receive the foreground parts in such a way that they can utilize them themselves. This is the very short way of saying it. The framework agreement says in many more words, in many more specific details. Um, have a look at it, but you know, I have never experienced that this is an issue here. You know, once understood, once this concept of PC, uh, innovation procurement or uh, here PCPs has been understood, uh, uh, should be okay. It makes sense. Yeah. Otherwise, please understand. Otherwise, this tender would not exist. Otherwise, this tender would be considered state aid because we are basically funding something you directly market. It's not allowed. It's illegal. No, but we provide you. We share the IP and uh, hope on a commercial solution we can buy later. So hence you can keep your IP. Uh, how does the contract? Award, how is the contract awarded and what does the project look like? There's one lead procurer. Yeah, Istanbul municipality. They sign all the contracts. They sign uh, they receive the invoices. Um, the payments go to the lead procurer um, or they trigger the, the lead procurer triggers the payments um, on behalf of all procurers. Yeah, so you do not sign. Seven, eight contracts, you sign one contract. There's a framework agreement across the entire phase, uh, which covers all. Um, all phases and then the timing gets a bit complicated in the framework agreement. I admit that it doesn't really matter uh, because the specific contracts start at a specific point in time and have a specific duration. So all is well, but in the framework agreement, all of everything is relative yeah, because we don't know exactly when the signs stuff is signed and so on. Um, no matter. Framework agreement, big document with uh, PCP related terms and the AI clauses. I come to this in a second. And um, then a very minimal specific contract basically saying you get for this phase so much if you have delivered the documents by then. Monitoring means that we will meet up during each phase on a regular basis and we will because we will work together in a way uh, solving this problem. Um, you will develop, we will give feedback, we will test for you, you, you can ask us everything. There are completion criteria, which means that um, once you have satisfied the minimum requirements for any given phase, then you will be paid. No, basically, you have delivered and you have done what is the minimum requirement as described in the change brief, then you are eligible to be paid. You have provided the work you promised. To be to be invited to the next phase or be eligible for the next phase, you need to be successful. Yeah, you basically need to sh show progress beyond, a little bit beyond. Um, IPR is a repetition. I said it before. Uh, yeah, on the AI, we are also the first, um, or one of the first projects to basically uh, deploy AI Act compliant clauses. Um, we are not, we haven't developed them by ourselves. I mean, we have provided feedback and we are providing more feedback on the annexes, which is not your bother. That's our problem. Uh, to the big, to the public bias community. Uh, but it is a very good uh, set. Read it. And I think even if you are, if you have bid and you lost, this is a good training exercise for any AI company on uh, what is to come everybody in Europe will do something like that we have done uh, now. And um, yeah, the clause, the, the clause is basically regulates uh, 
I mean, translate what the AI regulation states into clauses, contractual clauses. From this follow certain requirements which have been made part of the tender. Yeah. So uh, don't consider uh, um, that my statement here is only limited to whatever is in the framework agreement. No, you will be working on it. The experience is practical. For instance, you will uh, a risk management. Uh, um, you will describe risk management. Yeah, and if you have a platform, a solution which is transferable, yeah, you know, it's not unique to our for us. Then you have something you can use at in future tenders as well. Okay, I see. I haven't updated the. Okay, I tried. There are not many questions, so I tried to go through them. Uh, Mark, the ceiling is the previous list slide for all prices checks in a specific phase. Is this correct? Yes. So uh, there is a table. I will open the uh, TD1 in a minute. There's a table which also states the sums for each individual supplier, but otherwise, just consider math. 890 something thousand divided by five is the ceiling you will receive for each uh, as an individual supplier. Um, in phase four is not the relevant. How would you plan to evaluate the conversation value of the proposal? What is the proposal? If phase four is not the relevant, how? Okay. Commercialization is something we even have excluded from the initial tender. Yeah, we have decided that what we want to see is a business plan. I'm jumping now. Next week more, today a little bit. Your commercialization plan, only the tenderers which have been successful in phase one will have to develop a complete commercialization plan. Yeah, um, but it is critical for us during the project. If you have no idea, even after if you've been working on it, <clears throat> now in the tender and during phase one, and you don't start to begin have an idea on how to make money with it, if you want, then uh, why the heck should we give you more money? Yeah, you because you at some point you must become serious and say this is the future for uh, my business unit, whatever it is. So it will have value and it has a weight. The weight of each criterion is listed in TD1. Yeah? I will show it in a minute. Um, but obviously it's not the only one. Yeah, I mean there are many things. This phase four, what you saw is an opportunity for future funding, for an additional funding. Maybe I wasn't clear enough. I need to I need to uh, uh, clarify. PPIs are PCP is funding, PPI is less funding, and then comes commercialization commercialization. Yeah. PPI is probably not relevant in this case. There I have another PCP where it is definitely relevant. In this case, I don't know. Um, one can think about circular process in the city, stating from EG wastewater. No, this okay. I didn't say this. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I didn't say this. The we want to cover all domains, all value chains. The city, any city has to do. No, well, not each city has to do everything. But uh, taken as a whole, all cities have to do everything. So, and we don't want to. We want to have a solution which is deployable in any given city. So, hence, the AI should be able and trained on uh, 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 any given domain. Which does not mean that during your development you can focus first. Yeah, it does not need to help to be spe specialized in everything at the same time. You can say in the tender even because of our experience or whatever, we will start training our AI on, as you said, uh, wastewater and uh, building on experience there, knowing how the AI behaves and uh, what results it gets to. We go wider over time. That would be OK, but in principle. Uh, um, you want a general generalistic uh, solution. Did I cover all? I think so. In the chat.
Hello, is the one-off criteria compulsory at this stage? Yes. It's on-off. If you're off, you're out. It is like that. Uh, first, we check eligibility. Do you qualify? First, we check whether you have submitted everything. Then you, we might ask you questions. Then we check eligibility. Are you even allowed to receive funding? Uh, then we check, are you capable? And then we check, have you fulfilled the on-off award criteria? Yeah, so in a way, it is to be even before in, in the eligibility. Yeah, only if you are qualified for that, for the on-off award criteria, will you be able to, be, will we rate your tender? They're not that hard. Yeah, I mean, really, if you can solve the challenge, you should be able to cover the on-off award criteria. I'm pretty confident. Okay, a few reading remarks. Now, um, this is considered, please consider this as a help. Yeah, I, 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 I cannot, a very honest person, I cannot say that I might, might sound uh, patronizing at some point in the next few minutes. It's not my intent. Yeah, I just want to make the safeguard that you have thought of that. Yeah, so really, really just uh, see this as an instructive, as a reminder, as whatever of uh, uh, of what uh, to consider. So first of all, everything is in our tender page. On this single page, everything is linked. Yeah, if something is missing, or you say there should be something, ask a question, but. We also don't want to be swamped by questions of uh, where is the matchmaking platform? Uh, there it is. It is linked there. Yeah. Um, the second important thing is to understand the structure of the documents. So this table is in, I think, multiple documents or at least on multiple locations, definitely in TD1 on one of the first pages. It lists all documents which constitute the tender. This is already very generous, yeah, because most people just give you the files, never explain what they are. Um, the structure is TD1 and TD2 is basically our tender. Depending on who you are, whether you're a technical person or whether you are the more formal person, you will read either TD1 or TD2 first. As a technical person, most likely you first want to read the challenge brief. Yeah? As a formal person, ensuring that your uh, uh, company entity is uh, eligible, you probably want to read TD1 first. Ultimately, yeah, everybody should scroll to both, I would say. Um, excluding annexes in the change brief. Don't just when you need or if they're helpful, otherwise you can ignore. Then Though this is the tender, obviously some of the terms, the contractual terms come at the bottom and only become relevant in the projects. Yeah? So TD8, TD9, the, specific, the framework agreement and specific contract template. Uh, the key things are mentioned, stated in the tender, TD1 call for tender, but obviously the detail is in the clauses in, in the contract itself. Now, TD8, TD9, you will not submit anything. What you will submit is the, green, uh, the blue box. These are the files you will submit to us. You will put, depending on how many you are, you will sign multiple declaration of honors or power of attorneys. You will submit one each uh, uh, application tender for administrative, technical, financial, put them at the right place in the zip archive and submit the zip archive to us. We, I mean, often tendering entities uh, are only tendering and never answer tenders. Empirica does both. Yeah, I mean, no, does both. We we help others doing the tender. We are not we are not the procurers. The procurers are the procurers, but we help and we know how it is to respond to tenders and we know the typical confusions. So we believe to have streamlined it to the po most possible degree. But if you still find holes or whatever ideas, let us know. We might. Um, implement it already in this case or in the future. Any such thing is we take criticism we take very happily yeah and then and here the important remark there's a guidance follow it yeah then it makes sense but if you just jump into one of these documents uh, and if you start immediately into the technical tender and start writing 
might get harder for you that's than, than necessary uh, that's what i'm trying to say okay so the reading recommendations are basically in any given document at the beginning in the first few pages there's either a preface a forward or pink instructions please read them they explain what is to follow in this given document yeah because we don't want to repeat ourselves we want to keep these documents as short as possible so we have compacted this in the top td1 is mostly formal so administrative stuff eligibility what are the terms what are what is the instrument with the exception of section 2.1 which explains the project's progress so basically once the challenge brief has been responded, your tender has been successful, then the project starts and it cannot be described in the challenge brief because the challenge brief is generic. I mean, it exists even if our tender stops, the challenge is there. Section 2.1 describes how the project is expected to evolve and how we, what results we expect in any given stage. Yeah, the challenge brief is free of these complications. It is basically says, this is what we want. Yeah. To one describes this is how we want it to evolve. Please, yeah, on TD2, the challenge brief, it's purely technical. There's nothing administrative in it. Read it from top to bottom. I mean the main section. Yeah, it's 24 pages or something like that. It's not mega long. Uh, um, but read it top to bottom. To keep it short, we structured it in a certain way. The order of uh, uh, information operation organization is not accidental. At one point, it was different, but we changed it simply so that it makes more sense, that it is easier to see how things build on top of each other. Something has to come first, even if um, it's not the optimal thing sometimes. But consider all parts. Yeah, I mean in order, whatever, but consider all parts. It's important. In the documents, cross links should work. Yeah, so if you see numbers, even if it is not highlighted in any way, you can you should be able to click on it to jump there. Search definitely works. Yeah, so search terms always helps. And obviously ask questions if you if you have them. On the challenge be first and the challenge yeah, your tender the next three months until you submit it yeah, your head will be emerged in the tender and what do you want to respond to how is it structured so there are the award criteria there's a technical criterion and it has multiple sub criterion which you will recognize information something you heard before yeah In the TD1, in the section 3, 4 and 3, 5, there is basically the points you will get for T2 information for phase one tender. The thresholds you must reach, the weights uh, and so on, how it is being assessed, any formula, it's one only one formula, uh, price cost, uh, price quality formula, how it's calculated. This is mirrored one to one across the what criteria has a section in the challenge brief which basically describes what we want for this award criteria and the technical application template has a section on please write about this here in this section in such a manner so that we know which points to give you yeah it goes works in both directions for you so you know what to write and for us, so we know how to evaluate and what, uh, how much to, how much to assign to it. Um, obviously, as I said, it's complex, and sometimes referencing is necessary. Sometimes we have even described it. It should not stop you from sometimes repeating things or mentioning things, referring us upwards again. You can also write crosslinks as much as we can. So, um, yeah make it easy for us to read as well um yeah that's it in the challenge brief um 
it all have always have the same structure. I will show it in a minute. Important remark is that there is the minimum requirements as must or in bold in valid, li valid list. I will show an example in a minute. This is relevant not for your tender that you say, OK, everything else I can ignore. It is relevant for assessing whether you have been satisfactory or not. Yeah, this is the point of it. Um, obviously, some of the requirements we will write are the super cherry on the highest top. But uh, you might it not be possible to deliver it at all. We are realistic. It's OK. Uh, but the bold and the must is basically the bottom and we hope to end somewhere in between. Yeah, the further you get, the higher your quality, the higher your score, the higher your chances to succeed in general, not only to receive the money now, but also to receive the money later, because uh, this is what the market, the demand side is expecting. In the application form file, it's a Word file, directly editable for you. Um, the same sections apply, please for use them. And then you have um, some instructions on what content you should provide, some tables which are prepared for you so you don't have to develop them. And please then just use them, OK? Because otherwise we have to familiarize ourselves with six different ways of showing the same thing. Uh, just use them. It's easier for us to read. Um, yeah. Now, one more slide on the project. Yeah, once you've won, what do we expect from you once you've won? Obviously, to develop the solution. Yeah, so this is described in this table I mentioned before, TD1, table one. It basically describes the progress, the anticipated anticipated pathway for your CE solution. Yeah. The AI in the beginning with some limit capacity uh, to do this and that. Uh, the modules, uh, not full workflow, automatically generated workflows or whatever in the phase one. This only comes at the end of phase two um, and so on and so on. I will show the table in a minute uh, visually as well. This here, this graphic represents the deliverables. On first glance, it looks like a lot. It is not. It is very little. Why? So you write your technical offer. Yeah, and the technical offer becomes one this deliverable. A, a section of it of the technical offer, not the entire technical offer, part of the technical offer basically become the base for this deliverable. Obviously, we re request from you or expect from you to evolve it during your design development, during your research work you will be conducting to, uh -huh, nah, I was not entirely right, I need to change that or this is missing and now I have the detail, I now I have understood certain things, I need to describe them as well. So this expands and it expands over time. Yeah, it just gets better and better and better. Your description of your solution gets better and better and better. And ultimately you will have the ultimate, the ultimate pitch to convince any city to basically uh, subscribe to your service. The same goes for the change in a separate document. So this is the technical solution, the CE solution and the change because it requires multiple formats. That's why we didn't include it in the same file. Yeah, it's also, different people might read it, so hence we have separated it. We could have put it together, but I think it's better to, we think it's better to split it. Now, you are developing at some point the prototype, which you need to describe. So, from this follows automatically this deliverable or group of deliverables. This is iterated, and obviously, at some point, you have the pilots running. So, kind of, you update these deliverables and describe, document the operation of your sites. Since you are going to work in a regulated environment, such as the AI Act, which is from now or from very soon onwards, not now, soon onwards, regulated, you need to show your compliance, but already exists for GDPR and whatever not, so you need to document it, and it's basically this deliverable, and then again, extension update of it. And then there is some minimal reporting. A, nothing more but an abstract, more or less, and B is basically uh, a standard template from the EC on certain things so that they can communicate. 
plus a little bit of reporting of what you've done. We don't. Um, we will not expect from you to do a, to, to to report in a grant as if you were in a grant. Yeah, a little bit because we are a grant, but don't expect documentation requirements as if you were a grant. You are in the end still a tender, but documentation is obviously necessary. In the end, we are spending 5.6 billion. Okay. I don't see questions, so um, and it is not. It's twelve twenty. Okay, I try to force myself to uh, uh, now I'll to briefly show you the documents, very briefly, just the sections, and uh, then we do the Q and A. Okay, I need to change the way I share my screen. Give me a second, and now I have to look on the other screen. So this is TD1. You see the table we've seen before. The revision history, okay, general remark. There will be one lock. We hope to not to have update any documents. Yeah? If yes, you spotted mistakes and whatever you let us know, then we will release a new version of the uh, file. There will be one central text file in which all revisions are noted. On the sections. OK, so section one is basically uh, a summary of what the instrument is. If you think you believe to have understood PCPs, you can skip it. Yeah, I'm not saying to you to skip it. You can skip it. It's up to you. Uh, it describes the um, legal conditions why this instrument and this funding can exist in the first place. Tender profile is basically what we are um, Expecting the project and what is about to be tendered. So T1, I explained in detail already. So the common challenge, this is a repetition of uh, what uh, is in the challenge brief. And then we explain what is to be expected in each given phase and how the phases evolve. It's important to understand that even before writing the tender because you will have to write a work plan. Yeah. So uh, uh, any, every, the, the technical stuff has to read this. Yeah, the rest I explained. Basically, this is basically what I explained uh, uh, before. Who are the tenderers? When it, uh, do we end? It's a framework contract. The budget. OK, I said I show you the table. So this is the table uh, here. The math has been applied 170,000 for uh, any given for any of the five suppliers in phase one, 750,000 for any of the three suppliers in phase two and 1.3 million almost for the final two supplies for operation. Um, phase three is typically, okay, let's be honest, a uh, bit generous. Yeah, I mean, um, if you make it to phase three, then you have done a good part of the R&D. But obviously, we want an incentive for you to get into phase three. So um, one would assume that the effort you want to plan for phase two and one is a bit higher uh, on the off on the chance that you make it to phase three. As I say, commercial intent, so um, and IPR reduction uh, and so on. Um, yeah, obviously you will be active in many sites. It's a lot of work. It's not like it's not work at all. You will have to deploy the I'm saying too much. Sorry. Um, in any case, obviously the lump sum, the largest share of the sum is being spent in phase three because of the effort across the entire phases and as an incentive for you to get there. Um, I need to go back. Oh, it's split. Sorry. Evaluation of the tenders. Basically, it describes Eligibility, exclusion, uh, yeah, exclusion are the criteria I skipped before. Obviously, if you are uh, have uh, misused public funding before, then you're not eligible. Yeah? So you have to sign a declaration of honor for this, uh, stating that it is not so, or explain if it was so uh, at any given point in time. Um, 
yeah, that's done through the formal documents. Selection criteria, you need to describe a bit what you are capable of. On off award criteria, as I said, consider it an extension of the selection criteria uh, in saying that you can do R&D, that you can commercialize. And then the awarded criteria, the things I've been talking about most of the time, what you see in the challenge brief, the sections and the quality. All above is necessary for us to even read that far. Yeah. The evaluation procedure, basically how everything is done once we have, you have submitted and we start evaluating. Fear four, obviously, is very important for you to, for the admin people, or the formal people on how to submit. It is very detailed. We have restructured it from the last time we've done a PCP. It's pretty decent, I think. Um, I will go into detail in two weeks time at the, at the workshop. Um, and then obviously the standard stuff, uh, which language to use. Um, it's a binding offer. Yeah, if you bid, you bid. Then we trust you that you will deliver. Uh, that you have to put your questions via the supplies form or any given format here and now. Everything will be treated confidentially. How the project is uh, performed, including the payment schedule. Um, there is some pre-financing in phase two and three. In phase one, I don't think so because it's so short. Uh, but in general, we want to obviously, because we want SMEs as well, we don't want you to wait uh, an entire year to get paid. No, it is not so. The money will be distributed over time. The procedure could be cancelled not only by us, but also by the European Commission. Now, if it comes to the conclusion, whatever is being uh, submitted uh, will not uh, yield the results they have hoped for, then they could can tell us the procedure is over and it's over. And in hope, in case of appeal, what steps to take. The challenge brief. I mean, the structure is already clear. Yeah, it is the technical criterion, it is the commercial criterion, it is the project management. OK, I, sorry, I go back because I said I promised to show you. This table, so this table basically describes the progress. In each technical domain, information, operation, organization and change, how it is supposed to evolve. So in change, for instance, we want uh, the self-assessment tool to be fully defined. Just a revision of the concept and a change framework and uh, knowledge feature. Yeah, so basically a section of the tender. We want you to update it. We want you to develop. And research the self assessment tool, but this would be it for this part uh, in uh, phase one. And in phase two, which has two sub phases, if you want version one, version two. Yeah, we want to obviously advance on that and then it advances further and so on. I think this is a very fair, transparent way of telling you this is what we expect at any given point in time. It's a complex, it's a complex uh, problem, so obviously there could be multiple paths of going there. And if you say, uh, can, can explain why certain things should happen in different order, explain it to us whether you do it in the tender or you do it then at the kickoff, it's okay. Uh, you will be able to talk with us, but obviously we want to see progress across, e across each section to know that you are actually delivering what we want. Yeah, It's not developing something else. This is a possible answer or, and so on. So, so you see there's a summary. It's four pages long. Um, high level and then it goes deeper and here in each section I just open a random now let's open interaction and prompting now let's open a simpler example first um, yeah let's open the, let's look at the first at the at this one first each section or subsection has the same structure first is context it describes a little bit where we're coming from yeah, why is this relevant for us? Or why, where, what is the starting point from us? Now, basically from a vector, the first bit, the vector. And then the challenge, this is our issue, target, end of the vector. 
this is where we want to get. Yeah? And you see suppliers must develop the overall common challenge. Um, and in some sentences you will say, is he should or can? Yeah, this is then softer. This is you can then evaluate how to do it, whether to do it or not, even. Uh, but with must, we expect you to actually do it. Um, and then it gets a bit more complex. Here are principle lists. So the challenge is stated as a list of bullets. And you already see that some bits in between are not bold. So the order is by structure, not necessarily by relevance. The bold things are must for the final stage of your solution. Yeah, the final stage of, uh, um, yeah, final developing stage within the project duration. Uh, the other things are things to consider. And um, how you put these elements together and describe them and make them workable and so on, it's up to you. No, you are solving the issue for us. It's in a way, it's a little bit like a requirement list. We rather call it principle list because um, we do not ask for make the button blue and make it 40 pixels wide. These are clear cut requirements. You can say yes or no. Yeah. We rather say targets get us as far as possible there. And it is up to you to decide to say we can deliver this to 100 degrees, 100 percent. It's easy. This one, yeah, this is a compromise with uh, this one, so it's a bit on and off. Uh, um, whatever your solution description would basically explain to us what um, how what your approach is. I have only spoken about the technical part now about the uh, business related part section two. Sorry, I own document. I don't find anything. The innovative so commercial feasibility criterion. Yeah, it has also multiple sub criteria. Innovation. Um, I don't explain. I will explain it next week, not now. Our approach to this is might differ to what others have done, but I think it's easier for you and for us. Then we want the business model already in the first tender. So basically, how are you going to evolve? What do you see? How could this make money? How could this uh, add value? Yeah. Um, then there will, you will see some of these boxes. This basically says you don't have to answer this yet. You will only have to answer this is if you bid in the call off for phase uh, two, during phase one, for phase two, and so on. And then the commercialization plan, as I said, you don't have to bid do in the initial tender at all because we believe that you would spend lots of time on it and it would matter for most of you, for most of you, for, uh, for some of you, sorry. Uh, um, and for us, because you are writing while you're developing, so how do you know what um, you can commercialize it? Yeah. What are the exact steps of uh, reaching out and getting uh, a cash flow behind it? So this comes later and then it has a weight, then it has a threshold and so on and so on, but not initially. Which is something you can see in 342. Okay, I should just use this, it's easier. In 342, weighted overall criteria, you will find these tables here, and you see commercialization plan during phase one, initial tender, no points. Yeah. Here you see how we uh, assign uh, what weight we have given to any given section. Yeah, and the uh, project management criterion is um, yeah, two criteria, basically planning. What are you going to do? And the annexes, um, the core elements of the CE taxonomy that you see the list of links we have collected here doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, look at, I mean, yes, it matters. Have a look at it, but the files uh over time online it will become more uh, relevant we are obviously happy for you to contribute to it through your tender yeah you don't i didn't say this before you then have to disclose it now with um 
with good contributions for any given of these sections, uh, you are basically able to score points as well. Yeah, and if multiple people have done it, we will obviously attribute points to it multiple times. After the tender, provided this is public information, we will make it public and uh, this has finished this opportunity. But up until now, any contribution is rewarded. Our personas, which maybe explain a little bit more in detail how, how we imagine our users, I would say this is a section everybody should uh, have a look at. And then background info from the you know, from the focus groups and so on. Please remember, this is old. Yeah, this is ten months ago. Uh, it is good work. It was a lot of effort by the procurers, but obviously our challenge brief has evolved beyond that. So if you see conflicts, the challenge brief is right. Yeah, this is just additional information for you. To maybe understand what people think, actual users think. And this is it. OK, I jump back. And but. Yeah, I need to present the slides. Oh, I need to present one more slide. A few more slides. <sighs> there are any questions in the chat. One. And the questions, uh, the questions, uh, question I will answer in a minute. In the, Emma. Yes, uh, 14, 40 minutes ago. Am I right to say that the main focus of the tender submission needs to be on phase one, but we still need to provide info about what they expect to deliver in phases two and three? This is not entirely correct um, because we do not want you to uh, develop an answer. Um, for the challenge brief respective to table one on the first row? No, we want you to develop a concept on the entirety of the CE solution for to the end. Yeah, so really describe the maximalist solution you consider being able to develop. And then in the work plan, uh, section three, you have to provide the work plan for all. For all. Um, phases. But obviously, the next phase should be planned best. Yeah, the first phase needs to be planned to the maximum degree. Phase two, you can still iterate at a later point in time. If there are mega holes and you say forget that you need to prototype and that you need to schedule time uh, uh, looking at uh, proto uh, user feedback and whatever, then obviously this is not a good sign. Uh, but um, Still, you can improve this on the detail. So, I would say answer the question with no. Uh, your tender, your technical tender description should be an answer to the entirety of the challenge brief. Then, in the project, you make the steps by step to get there. But now we want to hear from you what do you imagine the CE solution to be in two years' time when the project has ended? OK, this um, Elena, your question is very technical. I will answer this next week. OK, I already say this uh, outright. Um, uh, OK, first I finish this deck. OK, so next steps. Just as a reminder, there are more events next week. Technical application training, so I will jump into the challenge brief. We will look at this uh, section to one and TD one more closely. And I will explain how to uh, we will explain how to write the, your tender a week after the administrative part and so on. And then later on, still opportunity for questions. And obviously, you can write questions at any point in time, including in two hours or at two o'clock at night uh, to suppliers at circularpsp.eu. Uh, yeah. If the answer is already provided in any given document, we will just provide you with a reference. If you ask something new, it might take a bit longer to respond because we need to coordinate, and then it would be also published in FAQ, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. A reminder on the matchmaking platform: if you haven't registered and you're looking for a consortium or you're looking for partners, 
yeah, if you're looking for partners, you might not want to, might not need to register. Just look at who is there and ask them, are you available? For you, the usual steps would be that you receive obviously information updates. Yeah, for this purpose, we have updated, uh, added you to a supplier newsletter, which will end. Yeah, once the project, once the tendering phase is over, we will not use these addresses anymore. Any registrant. Yeah, it's just for the purpose of the tender. At any point, you will be able to unsubscribe. So let's say there are important questions which have been released in the FAQ. Obviously, they're on the website. They will be published on social media. At some point, we will write a newsletter as well. But we're also happy if you subscribe to the project newsletter so you learn about uh, what the project is, even should you, should you not bid or win or whatever. My recommendation is to read and do some form of gap analysis. Yeah, basically have a look and say, OK, we are able of this. We are not able of that because for this you need to know to build your consortium. And recommendation is to start as soon as you can. It's a major stone. It's it's a major milestone in uh, developing a bit. Yeah, um, because it typically holds up where other work uh, unless you. Yeah, I don't leave. I leave that. Yeah, create an outline. This you can also do before you build the consortium. This the order here is well, it depends on how your whatever your approach is, but obviously start with the big picture and then write and iterate the rest. Yeah. If you've understood the challenge as a whole, then you can describe your vision and then you go dig dig in deeper and then iterate in a loop. If I do this in detail, does it actually add up with my uh, overall concept or not? With, does it need updating? Yes, it needs updating. What does it mean for the other sections? Do they need updating at all? And so, uh, so it goes. And obviously, ensure that all formal steps have been done. Always, uh, admin people, formal people. Uh, this is not derogatory. On the contrary, uh, without them, uh, I would not have a job um, because we would never acquire funding. It is critical. It is public money. It requires some diligence. It is some effort. Um, uh, take the time, uh, have the patience, and obviously submit in time. We will also be busy, yeah. So we will answer your questions, ask at any point you wish. We will prepare the evaluation, also looking at the project, yeah, how we will um, work with you, because so far we haven't. We will grow the follower network. If you, one of the attendees, are uh, a city which just is interested, write to us and we will add you to the follower network. We will work on the CE taxonomy a little bit or release later before phase one starts. We might add some sources live all the time online. Yeah? So whatever you see in the annex of Change Brief might not be the most recent version because we have added other stuff there. Um, no, actually, we might not. We will not publish it. Sorry, I collect myself. We will not publish it because other, this would would undermine uh, your ability to score points with that. We will not publish. We will not make an update to the Excel list. We will, but we will still internally work on it, uh, regardless. Yeah, and then at some point in May, you will get the result. And if you are a winner, you must be ready to start within a few weeks after that. Yeah. It's not three months later, like in a grant. It's a tender. It means a few weeks later. Yeah? You will receive the note, then you will receive the contracts, and then soon after uh, the phase starts, and you know the duration of phase one is only four plus one month, so you can't start two months late. Then you automatically failed in phase one. In uh, master resources ready, uh, a limited amount of resources ready because expected results are limited uh, to go ahead. 